Jónas Arnar. I have a degree in computer science. I've been going on glaciers for many years, guiding and with friends. I'm a member of a search and rescue team in Iceland. I've been working and traveling in Svalbard. This is the story of my involvement in the 2019 recovery mission of the Air France Flight 66 engine part that a couple of years earlier fell from one of the largest passenger airplanes in the world and onto the Greenland ice sheet. The first team members from the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland, with the supervision of scientist Kenneth Mankoff, arrive in our Sarsvak on the 17th of April 2018. Three days later, a team of six is flown onto the ice sheet, along with two snowmobiles and almost 600 kilos of cargo. The search area has been narrowed down using information from an aerial surveillance campaign conducted by the French aerospace lab Onera. It is a mission that will first be successful more than a year later when a specialized glacier rover with ground penetrating radar locates the missing part under meters of condensed snow. The rover is operated by the American company Polar Research Equipment headed by engineers Austin Lyons and Joshua Elliott. With their equipment, they have managed to detect hidden glacier crevasses on both sides of the park, potentially hundreds of meters deep. This two-year project will have involved a number of people with wide-ranging skill sets. Scientist Dirk van Aas, who heads the company Greenland Guidance, handles logistics for the expeditions. He will eventually recruit three Icelandic mountain rescue specialists who will partake in the project's final expedition, recovering the part from the ice. Uh, my name is Ken Nenkoff. I am affiliated with the Geological Survey of Greenland and Denmark. It's a branch of the Danish government. And I am here in Narsasvak, Greenland, where we are trying to extract part of an airplane engine, an A380-800 airplane engine from the Greenland ice sheet. A year and a half ago, September 30th, 2017, an A380, uh, one of the big double-decker planes flying from Paris to LA, uh, lost an engine over the Greenland ice sheet. It fell from 38,000 feet, and uh, they requested that we try to find it with uh, the Aarhus Hydrogeophysics Group, a custom-built metal detector, and with a robot from Polar Research Equipment, we searched uh, part of a 15 square kilometer area over a few weeks. Uh, we're here with the help of Greenland Guidance, running logistics, and a team of Icelandic search and rescue experts. So we have this team because the part is in a crevasse field. June 28, 2019, a team of five has been waiting for favorable weather conditions to conduct the extraction of the engine part roughly 150 kilometers northwest of Narsarsvak. The team consists of Icelandic rescue specialists Arnar Anton and Thomas, along with Dirk from Greenland Guidance and Austin from Polar Research Equipment. Weather conditions for the next seven days are not looking good, so the team prepares to camp on the ice sheet for an extended period of time, in complete isolation from the surrounding world. The camp will have to be able to tolerate extreme weather conditions, and there's an ever-present chance of encountering a polar bear. The team will arrive on two flights to the older camp, two kilometers away from the new base camp. Austin, Arnar and Dirk are on the first flight, and Thomas and Anton on the second. 
The first task at hand will be to gather equipment to be moved with a helicopter to the new site where the extraction will take place. The Air Greenland helicopter heads to town to pick up the remaining members and returns a little less than two hours later with Anton and Thomas. The Swedish pilot Nils handles the flying for the expedition and is responsible for slinging equipment on and off the ice sheet and between working areas. The Icelandic team members will be sent to the new base camp to check the area for crevasses and will make sure it's safe for the others to be flown in. So it was not until Friday that we there was a there came a weather gap and uh, we were able to yeah go up to the glacier and, and and it was really we had a really narrow time we had to organize really well. I was asked to uh, put together a team of guys to uh, assist with the recovery of the engine part. In Iceland, uh, we have a lot of opportunity to uh, train on glaciers. Like two days before we were supposed to uh, fly out, uh, got a call from uh, from Dirk. They weren't uh, sure if we would be able to fly up on the glacier. The weather forecast for the week uh, wasn't particularly good. He said that we could fly later on the uh, Saturday. But we decided to uh, take a chance and uh, fly on the uh, Tuesday. The, uh, the chance we took just really paid off. An avalanche probe is used to check the thickness of the underlying snow layers so that a safe working area can be established. Dirk and Austin arrive on the second flight and the team starts building the new base camp. The red flags mark an area where a crevasse is believed to be lurking, so a rope is set up and the team members will always be hooked in when crossing between the living quarters and the working area. The pilot now makes the 40 minute flight back to town, leaving the team alone on the ice. Construction of the camp is almost complete and the excavation will commence the following day. A key component of the camp is the mountain hardware stronghold. A dome tent engineered for harsh conditions. The tent will serve both as the camp kitchen and the main resting area. Even if there is a low chance of a polar bear showing up, an alarm tripwire system is raised around the camp and the team sleeps with rifles by their sides. At one moment when we had the fog coming in and there was like a you didn't see only 20 meters ahead. You already you thought a little bit about like, ah, oh, is there a polar bear coming? There was a polar bear not that far from uh, the town that we were staying in, uh, just some weeks before, I believe. They hadn't seen a bear there for a while though. One of the members of the team uh, had uh, uh, spent some time in Svalbard, where there are a lot of polar bears. 
there was a bear like like a few weeks before we arrived uh, in the uh, fjord. They usually arrive early in the spring, if they arrive. I think I felt a little uncomfortable in the beginning. The team has started digging at the designated site where the engine part is suspected to be located. If the prediction is correct, the engine part will be at a depth of about 4 to 5 meters of snow, with at least two layers of solid ice in between. Here we are on the Greenland ice sheet, digging out the A380 fan hub part. We're currently at uh, two meters depth or so. It's progressing nicely, this is our first dig day. We still have uh, two or three meters to go, and it'll get more difficult the deeper we get. 16 to 20 metric tons of snow and ice will be shoveled onto large sleds that will then be pulled up a ramp by a motor powered winch. The sleds are then moved to the accumulation area, where they will be emptied into large piles. An 8 meter long composite drill will be used around the area to inspect the underlying snow layer and to double check for crevasses. The underlying layer seems to be solid as far as the drill can reach. Radar scans indicate that a crevasse may potentially be lurking near or even underneath the excavation site. So anchors are dug in the dense snow and industrial fall protectors are implemented to ensure the safety of the people digging. The team has encountered a layer of dense blue ice that will require a one meter long chainsaw with a special ice cutting chain. Utmost care must be taken when operating potentially dangerous machinery in this remote setting, as rescue may be days away due to weather conditions. The team has made good progress, but even if they manage to extract the engine part from the ice, there is no way of telling if weather conditions will improve enough to allow for safe transport anytime soon. Um, we found the part one meter from a crevasse. Uh, we have to dig a four meter hole next to a crevasse that's five meters wide and possibly hundreds of meters deep, but there's a six meter snow bridge over the crevasse. So that's reasonably safe to walk across, but digging a four meter hole next to a six meter snow bridge is cause for concern. So we have the Icelandic search and rescue team members here to help us dig. We found something. Cool, okay, nobody <laughs> touched it with their gloves. Now we're gonna go for the surgical gloves. So you dig around so uh, and uh, we get some snow out of the way. The team has now found the engine part and we now proceed to excavate it carefully in order not to damage it any further. A 200 kilo Hermann Nelson, an industrial heater, will now be used to melt the ice that surrounds the engine part. The gasoline powered heater is engineered to withstand difficult winter conditions and has proven useful in environments as extreme and cold as the South Pole Station. Okay. The next step is to start discussing the best approach to move the engine part from its present location once enough ice has melted to get it unstuck. The Hermann Nelson is pumping hot air at a constant rate and is making working conditions in the hole exceedingly warm. The team must soon find a way to attach the rope to the engine part in case the warm air melts its way to the potential crevasse underneath, causing the floor to collapse. See if you can melt those blades out. See how it continues all the way into the snow wall over there. Yeah. I don't think 
it's uh, I think it's bent. So I think we're looking at at least half a hub, almost half a hub. Now we just need to get it up to the surface. The Icelandic team members have decided that the best approach to extract the engine part would be to build a rope system by hand, utilizing mechanical advantages. It is a system similar to those used in rescue operations on glaciers and mountains. The part will be lifted and moved onto a sled that will then be pulled out of the hole using the motor-powered winds. In order to achieve that, the ramp that has been used to transport snow out of the hole is going to have to be made twice as wide to fit the engine part's blades. This will require a few additional metric tons of snow to be removed. Special measures are taken to make sure that neither tools nor debris falls into the excavation site, potentially damaging the part or injuring the person working there. The team has been working far into the night and has decided to call it a day. <laughs> The excavation site has been covered up with plywood plates to prevent the buildup of snow that would otherwise have the potential of causing problems in the morning. The team is hoping to at least get the part to the surface the next day. The weather today is better than expected. The team is now hoping to extract the engine part later this day and if possible use the weather window to get the helicopter to airlift the part off the ice seat and back to Narsarsvak airport. Okay, oh, stop. An attempt will be made to put a sling around the engine part to see if it has become loose from the ice. Yeah, I should try and uh, nudge the padding under it. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. 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 The first attempt to lift the engine part results in the industrial sling being partially damaged, despite the padding applied to prevent cutting. The team gets the idea of pulling a sling through a narrow plastic tube that is stronger than the padding and will withstand contact with the engine part's sharp edges. The helicopter has managed to make the flight from town and will stay for a few hours or as long as the weather doesn't change for the worse, in case the part will be ready to be airlifted. So now it's a couple of hours later, we are putting a second strap around. Hopefully this won't be cut by the very sharp edges of the fan hub. The team has now set up a robust system with three ropes. As a 
collection of lockable specialized pulleys will allow the team to control the position of the engine part and move it onto the carrying sled with a high degree of precision. Okay, we need it on the other side. Okay, if you're not doing it. We see it, we see it. Now we have to pull it from here. Release it on the other side. That's it. Go. Go, slug it up, slug it up. Okay. It's free here. Think so. We're losing. Yeah. Okay, the police are locked. The last yet. Secure it. <laughs> On the third day of the expedition, the mission is now complete. The weather provides for excellent flying conditions, and the engine part will now be made ready to be airlifted to Narsarsvak. The team will start dismantling most of the camp so that provisions and equipment can be flown off the ice a few days later. The helicopter will return in two hours' time and collect the five members. The main technical problem we faced on the glacier was how were we going to extract the airplane part. So we thought about it for a while and uh, to, for a few hours because uh, we didn't want to make any mistake. Like we would drop it, we could damage it and, and that, that was not the option. We were able to come up with a, a solution that, uh, that really worked really well. And, uh, we managed to do it smoothly and, and, and safely, and that's the most important thing. I would say that that's the key element in that part of the expedition, was the, the, uh, the teamwork. It was uh, located between uh, two crevasses, so we had to uh, dig down with shovels. We also had to saw through ice layers with, uh, with a chainsaw. It was like a thick ice layer around the part. We uh, used a pulley system. Uh, with, that we use uh, mainly in uh, search and rescue, or especially mountain rescue. Um, and we hoisted it up on a sled. There's a lot of very talented people that uh, made this recovery possible by uh, working for uh, almost a couple of years. Here, here it says 20. Oh, yeah. Hand on your flag, you know. Gonna fly? Not this time. This is what they call shoulder to shoulder.
<laughs> it was still wrapped, but I was like, I'm not unwrapping it. I want to wrap it up and tape it with the official tape. Yeah, so tape it. Have it. After two years of intense work, the missing engine part has finally been recovered. In the coming days, a transport plane will be sent to Greenland to collect the engine part and fly it to the United States, where it will undergo further examination. In a week's time, all equipment related to the project will have been made ready to be shipped out. Soon everyone involved will be on a flight on their way home. Last year also. It's a difficult place to work. It's a beautiful place to work. <laughs>